Hello, Cahooters from all over the world. Welcome to our first webinar of the back to school season. We are so excited to feature and share with you all of the amazing tools available on the Kahoot platform, both in your live games and assigned Kahoots at home and all over the world in general. Um, today we will be recording the session, so please know that the recording and video will be available for you always and forever on the Hoot webinars website, and we will be happy to share this recording with you through email um, with the registration link and tool that you have signed in to access today. Without further ado, I am excited to welcome and share um, Glenn Cake from Canada coming to you to share all about the amazing ways that you can maximize question techniques with the audio features on Kahoot. If you have any questions throughout this pr presentation and webinar, please feel free to drop them in the chat and we will answer them to the best of our abilities and stay tuned for um, amazing information coming at you next. Thanks guys. Good afternoon, buenos dias, bonjour tout le monde, and thank you, Hannah, for that wonderful introduction. It is truly a pleasure for me to be here today to look at some of the new features that Kahoot has to offer uh, for language teachers or for any teacher, really. But I think as language teachers, we're going to find a whole lot of cool ways to introduce things. So you can all see my screen there. I'm looking out over the cold Atlantic Ocean because I'm coming to you today from the Far East, the Eastern part of Canada, the most Easterly part of North America, uh, Newfoundland and Labrador. So it's a pleasure to be here today. I have just over 30 years experience uh, as a French teacher, and I've taught both in a traditional face-to-face -face classroom, as well as virtually, which I'm currently doing now. So it's, it's a really great pleasure to be here. And I'd like to thank Aaron for helping me today, as well as Hannah, who's doing her first Kahoot webinar. So let's hear it for Hannah and Aaron. Great to be here. All right, guys, we're gonna jump right in. So on the agenda today, which will be recorded, uh, we're gonna look at Kahoot in general. I'm sure that most of you here today are all users and lovers of Kahoot. So and we're gonna Glenn, look at- before we continue, just to make sure that you are sharing your presentation um, so that we can all follow along to your agenda. Absolutely. Too. One second. Sure. My apologies. There we go. All right. There we go. Perfect. We can all see that now, Hannah. We're good to go. We are good to go. Thanks, Glenn. All right. Thank you. So the most easterly point in North America is where I'm coming from for you today, and that being Newfoundland and Labrador in Eastern Canada. And it's an absolute pleasure to be here. I've been working uh, using Kahoot in my classrooms for the past eight years since Kahoot started and uh, looking forward to sharing some neat, exciting ideas today, especially with a focus on the audio feature. So this is generally what we're gonna have a look at today. And if you have any questions, of course, you can pose them in the chat and we'll do our best to answer all of them, of course. All right, so that out of the way, we're all lovers of Kahoot. That's why we're here. So it's, it's not really new to any of us here at Kahoot. The features that Kahoot offers with the quiz audio are ideal for language learners of any nationality or any language, of course. French, Spanish, Punjabi, Mandarin, whatever. And having looked at the chat when you guys were coming in, there are over 22 countries represented here today, which is fantastic, right? So what I love about the new features that Kahoot adds and continues to add is that um, the quiz audio off is a game changer. It offers up a whole new host of question possibilities. That's what we're gonna look at today. And they've come a long way from Kahoot when it initially started with the most part for just the multiple choice questions. So let's look forward to that. All right, so you can see, I don't need to tell you how to use Kahoot in your classrooms. On a personal note, I use them mostly as a formative assessment tool. 
that's my go-to for Kahoot. But I love the introduction of new content, another feature when you can combine slides and questions as a lesson. The homework option is also excellent. Uh, I'll ask students to complete and possibly improve upon scores that they received in class by assigning a self-paced homework challenge. Finally, something I find successful is to invite students to create their own cahoots and share with the class. There's all kinds of wonderful ways there. Now, the big game changer, which recently arrived in Kahoot, is that everyone can see the questions and answers on their screens. And a little later today, when we play a live game, you're gonna see that very feature in action. So traditionally, Kahoot, you would have to look up at the teacher's screen to see the question prompt and then choose your answer. Now it's all on the screen there for you, which is fantastic. All right, so I mentioned we can assign Kahoots as self-paced games. These can be played anywhere, at any time, from any device, all right? So we can ask students to play again. We can do a replay, which is ideal for studying and learning as well, and, and kind of formalizing that content that you're doing in your day-to-day -day classes, All right? So we're moving on. We're looking at creating a Kahoot. So we know how simple it is. So we add a question, that's our first step. And now we have a whole host of options that are available now for the question feature. So we've got quiz, true or false, typing the answer in, puzzle. And of course, we're gonna look at the quiz audio feature today. But in addition, we also have polls, word clouds, open-ended questions, and brainstorming, of course. All right, so again, that's kind of a run through of what is available. And the selection of question types offers you as the instructor, the opportunity to create interactive and engaging questions. What we wanna do, I feel, we wanna keep the students on their toes. So if we give multiple choice, four, five, six times in a row, we may lose them. So let's throw in some puzzle questions, some quiz audio questions, different things to keep them hopping, all right? And to do that, of course, we go to, we have a wonderful image library in the Kahoot application. And now they offer wonderful GIF images, G-I-F, GIF images, which can be added. In addition, the YouTube link, feature is something that I really, really enjoy using. And rather than using the entire YouTube clip that you have found for your language class, you can crop that, okay? So you can take 30 seconds of a five minute video and, and do that, have that as a question prompt with your students. All right, so wonderful ways there. All right, Hannah, I'm gonna get you to jump in there for a moment and talk a little bit about the, uh, Kahoot versus Kahoot EDU. Fantastic. So we know and love Kahoot or we're learning to know and love Kahoot as a great way to interact with your classroom, whether you are teaching in school live or virtually also live. We can assign Kahoot challenges and at home play. And it's a great way to gauge that engagement and assessment throughout your learning and teaching experience. Um, most recently, we have been excited to announce and share the Kahoot EDU platform, which really caters to the entire school experience rather than just an individual teacher or classroom. So with Kahoot EDU, you now have opportunities to share teaching, share Kahoot collections and entire course catalogs across different teachers and with licenses that operate and work, not just for your own specific independent classroom, but for an entire school and district um, community. So with the Kahoot EDU platform and with those extra features, you have opportunities to share that premium content with cross collaboration in both your school team with district leaders, or even across grade levels in schools um, and an entire community. So that Kahoot EDU access really broadens um, your collaborative scope and experience within Kahoot and within playing different Kahoots as well. Perfect. Thank you Excellent. so much, Hannah. Sure. Excellent. All right. So uh, moving along then, that's the Kahoot versus the Kahoot, Kahoot EDU. 
And I see there are some questions in the chat coming up about that, which will be addressed. But I just want to show you a quick video that's 30 seconds long. And I want you to watch how the quiz audio feature is being used in these examples. Without further ado, I'm going to play that. J'aime manger des pommes. Me voy a comprar un auto. All right, now you noticed on the last example that was given is that the Kahoot audio prompt was played twice. Well, you can play that two, three, as many times as you want, especially if your students want to hear that for sure, okay? So moving along. Uh, the creation of a read aloud audio question is as easy as one, two, three. And folks, there are 37 languages. So this feature is available in 37 different languages. All you have to do is to type in the text that you want to be read aloud in your question prompt, and then simply Kahoot will read it aloud for you. And we're going to see some examples of that in action when we get into our live game. All right. So as we saw in the short video clip, the read aloud question is ideal for translation based questions. But as language teachers, our wonderful creativity shines through and we can create much, much more. We'll see examples of that in the live game that we'll be playing very shortly. All right. So it's pretty straightforward just to give you a quick run through. Um, I'm going to put my, I'm going to type in the answer, obviously, what I want to be read aloud. And look what I can do here. Not only can I ask questions that are multiple choice, as you saw in the example of the YouTube video, but I can also add in puzzle questions. I can ask students to put the letters in the correct order or listen to a sentence in the target language and put the words in the correct order. This is really a game changer because we can change any question prompt that we have to offer various, various question types. So I think that's a wonderful. So let's get ready to play. I believe we have some prizes on the line today, as always. Um, so what I'm going to do, I'm going to bring up our Kahoot game, which is called Say Halloween. So it's got a combination of questions that are in French, and there's some in English, there's some Spanish there. Um, so there's two ways that you're going to join. Or you're going to go to a browser, as you know, put in kahoot.it, or via the Kahoot app that you may already have downloaded onto your phone or tablet. All right, so as I go into the settings of this game, I'm going to ensure that by my, my Bitmoji is going to host the game. I'm going to Click the player identifier because this allows me to collect email addresses of my students, which I you don't you wouldn't need to do that each and every time, but it's an option that you may want to do. Okay, I'm also going to turn on the friendly nickname generator. And finally, I'm going to show questions and answers on the player devices. All right, so without further ado, I think we're all ready to go. We're going classic. And up comes the number. Let's go, everyone. Bonne chance. Buena suerte a todos. Thanks, Glenn. We're excited to see names pop up on the Kahoot board to start. As Glenn mentioned, you can access this game from your Kahoot browser, kahoot.it, or just logging into the Kahoot app. Yay, we already have some participants and players. All right, and as people come in throughout and all around the globe, I don't know if I've got a complete list here, Hannah, but I'm going to read out some of the countries that I saw there. The Philippines, Saudi Arabia, all across the USA, of course, Thailand, Germany, 
Russia, Romania, Hong Kong, Turkey, Mexico, Guadeloupe, Italy, Nigeria, Macedonia, uh, Latvia, Costa Rica, Peru, Jamaica, Abu Dhabi, Qatar, Portugal, and Scotland. Just to name a few, and I'm sure there are some more. All right, so we'll give another 30 seconds, perhaps, for people to log in to the game. And we'll get started. In case you missed it the first time, the game pin is at the top center of Glenn's screen that we're sharing right now. I'll read it aloud and put it in the chat so you have it to use and revisit. It is 899-4980. Again, I'll drop it in the chat too in case you want to double check and make sure your pin is correct. 899-4980 is our game pin. All right, all right, Hannah, I'm ready to go. When you are, you give me the green light. I will start, but people are still coming in. I love these wonderful generated nicknames. They're tremendous. I know that I see 265 and counting. We just put the pin back in the chat message. So we'll give people another minute or two to log in. Excellent. And while people are waiting, I'll just point out that uh, in the top left, you will see the option. Uh, I've got English, of course. If you click on that link, you're going to see a whole host of languages that you can play the game in. That's the platform, uh, the language that will be used to prompt your students to log in, uh, whether or not they were correct or wrong, and who's on fire who's on a hot streak, so on and so forth. So that's a pretty neat feature just to mention as well. Hannah, I think we're gonna hit 300 participants. My goodness, this is quite possibly the biggest Kahoot game I have ever played in my life. I don't know about you guys. Very exciting. Congratulations to you, Glenn, and congratulations to everyone. Maybe this is the largest game um, that some of our players have been involved in as well. Glenn, it's great to see your um, teacher Bitmoji at the bottom of uh, your host screen. It's always fun to see how people animate themselves to play Kahoot. Absolutely, yes. That's something that uh, the students also pick up on that as well. So that, that shows up not only in the beginning, but also at the end when the podium uh, is shared with students to see. All right, we're over 300 now, that's tremendous. And that's getting a bit warm, so I'm gonna, whew. It is fall in Eastern Canada, but that is warm with that on your head for too long. All right. So I guess we'll give another 30 seconds maybe and get started. Sounds good. And as you mentioned, and pace along to start our Kahoot, um, the question and answer chat 
is fully live. And if you have any questions, please feel free to drop them in. Both myself and Aaron are working to respond to them as fast as we can. So thank you for your patience in finding those answers and checking back to be sure we can respond. Excellent. Okay. So, and again, I'm going to start the game now, folks, but you will see in the bottom right-hand corner, for those of you who haven't been able to get in just yet, the information to join. So without further ado, here we go with the wonderful Kahoot Halloween background. It's our World Languages Kahoot Challenge. Good luck, everyone. First of all, a word cloud. There's no points associated with this question, but I'd like for you to type in the answer what language or languages do you teach? And this will give us a better idea of um, exactly who we're dealing with. Look at the answers just flying in there. The bigger squares or rectangles will represent the most answers of that particular um, question. So another 30 seconds, we'll see. And again, once everyone has answered, it will automatically advance to the next question. So that's a neat feature as well. Got our Kahoot background. I turned it down a bit. Maybe I should turn it up a little bit. There we go. Another five seconds. And let's see who the most popular languages are today for the teachers in the room. There we go, English and French, uh, German, French, Spanish, a lot of English teachers here today. I think Spanish and English are probably the two most popular. We have Arabic as well, Cree First Nation, uh, Danish, that's wonderful. All right, so that gives us an idea, a little bit of background information about you guys, so you can see how this could be used in the cahoots that you create. Which is excellent. Now I'm just going to play that one again. So this is the quiz audio feature. Let's listen into that. Kahoot has added a new audio feature, which is excellent. Let's give it a try. All right, so we're going to give that a try. And our very first question worth points, double your points right off the bat. In which country might you hear? The following. Süß oder saueres. Süß oder saueres. So as you can see, I can play that clip as many times as I want, ensuring that my students are going to be successful in answering the question. And that particular phrase, Germany, that was German, indeed, German it was. So we move on and we have our leaderboard right off the bat. We have the space ferret followed by the knowing owl and the winged squid. Let's keep moving. Now we have a puzzle question. Listen carefully and place the sentence parts in the correct order. Avhängig av var i Norge du är, er, vill du sannsynligtvis höra knask eller knep eller dig eller deng. Now that was a challenging question, folks, but look at you guys going. Wow. I'll play it one more time. Avhängig av var i Norge du är, vill du sannsynligtvis höra knask eller knep eller dig eller deng. Avhängig av var i Norge du är, vill du sannsynligtvis höra knask eller knep eller dig eller deng. Okay, turn down my audio. Another 12 seconds to answer this question. This is a Norwegian sentence having to do with what happens for trick-or-treating around Halloween. So let's see how many people got that one right. The challenging one to get us going. All right, so we're about 38%, almost half of you got it correct. And I won't try to pronounce it, but here it is right here in the correct order, uh, trick-or-treating in Norway. So we move on and we see that 
The snowy swan has climbed tremendously up 101 places. The winged squid has jumped into first, the decisive crab, noble elk, stellar kitten, and the knowing gazelle. Off we go to number five, another listening question. Identifica la casa embrujada. Of course, you're playing that, but you can hear that on your own, on your own device that you're playing with. All right, and there we were looking for the haunted house, the haunted house in Espanol. All right, very good. We're moving right along. Oh, we have a little change in the top five leaderboard, and the brave dingo has the highest answer streak of three in a row. Let's keep going. See what we have next. Now, this is a French question. Combien de citrouilles peut on voir dans cette image? How many pumpkins can we see in this image? Let's be patient. Wait for the image reveal feature. All right, some people are guessing. We have deux, trois, quatre, ou cinq. Five seconds. And it looks like the answer is going to be quatre. Good stuff. Now I can show the media again. Un, deux, trois, quatre, n'est-ce pas? So four, uh, four is the answer. And over 200 people got that one correct. But it was a combo breaker because 14 people have lost their streak of three in a row. But that's okay. The winged squid is still up there. The noble elk has climbed up the tropical cat, the knowing gazelle, and the arctic bison. Number seven. Here we go. Qu'est-ce que c'est? What is it? Again, the image reveal feature. Don't answer too quick. Or maybe you want to answer quickly and take a guess. The choices are all in French, of course. So we have un loup-garou, a werewolf, une chauve-souris, a bat, une citrouille, a pumpkin, ou un bonbon, a candy. And yes, it is une chauve-souris. N'est-ce pas une chauve-souris? Great. Kahoot is wonderful. For, for themes like this, Halloween, Christmas, Thanksgiving, wonderful way. Tough round. Nine players lost their streak of three in a row. And we're not quite there yet. All right, here we go. Double our points. Lots of time left. A popular means of transportation for any witch. <laughs> One didn't take long. And you can see in the image, I've got my, my gif from Kahoot of the witch flying across the sky on her. You guys know what it is. It's the broom, of course. All right, good stuff. Now, maybe witches do travel in the other forms as well, but probably the most popular is going to be the witch. Speedy Panda has climbed up, wonderful. And the Medallic Chicken is now in the top five. Tropical Cat has taken over the lead. Now, folks, this one, you have to listen carefully to the song because the next three Kahoot questions will be based on this song. I'm not going to play the entire song, but parts of it. So let me make sure that we can hear that. And off we go. Les fantômes aussi, le ciel est tout noir, les nuages sont gris. Est-ce que tu as peur des méchants esprits? Oh, monsieur, oui, 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 oui. oui. All right, there it is, folks. So the next three questions are based on what you just heard. Here we go, number 10, les sorcières. Complete that sentence. Is it sort de soir, sort de soir, 
Sorti le matin ou sort hier? Right from the song. All right, less than 10 seconds, over 300 answers. And here we go. So the answer we're looking for is sort le soir. Les sorcières sort le soir. The witches go out at night. So let's see. 24 people got four in a row now, which is fantastic. And look who's climbing up. The swan, the seal, and the wombat. Tropical cat still in the lead. Medallic chicken hanging around. The second question, based on that video. Dans la chanson, de quelle couleur est le ciel? Le ciel est tout noir. And for that particular question, I asked the question prompt up here and I actually had the answer in the audio. That was something different that you might want to try. And of course, we have images as the answers. Le ciel est tout noir. Tout noir is all black. Here we go. The friendly glider is back with three in a row. The melodic chicken is climbing up. It's getting Closer and closer, here we go. Now the puzzle feature, double your points. Put the pieces in the correct order. And I'm gonna play it for you again. The answer is here. Est-ce que tu as peur des méchants esprits? And just to help you out, est-ce que tu as peur des méchants esprits? Est-ce que tu as, so you're, we're moving this one around. On our tablet, we're moving it left and right. If we're on our phone, you may have to slide it up and down. Est-ce que tu as peur des méchants esprits? Right from the chanson, c'est l'Halloween. Now, I always like to point out to my students that most sentences or questions Start with a capital letter and always finish with a punctuation. So you know what's first and fourth, right? And the answer there, 65% of you got it right. Est-ce que tu as peur des méchants esprits? All right, the tropical stork is back with three in a row, but the tropical cat is still in first and the fearless seal is climbing up as well. Identify the black cat. Identifier le chat noir. Le chat noir. Love the love the images as, as answers um, in the Kahoot. Wonderful tool for many, many students. And most of you got that right. Yes, Le Chat Noir was the yellow. Okay, the Dr. Puffin is making a comeback with three in a row. Trop Tropical Cat is still in the lead. Let's move on. Listen to the Spanish prompt and choose the correct image. Identifica al gato negro. Identifica al gato negro. Identifica al gato negro. Sorry about my Spanish pronunciation. But it was the same question, wasn't it? But this time we used the quiz audio feature to ask that same question. But the prompt was in the audio. Okay. Yeah, the Kahu can use any question, any language at all. There's 37 languages that this can be uh, produced in. All right, so six people, we got five in a row. Let's keep moving. We're over halfway there now. Let's double our points. How long does the Mexican celebration Dia de los Muertos last? Again, all around the theme of Halloween, these questions are. Is it 30 days? Is it two days? 
Is it just a day or is it seven days? Dia de los muertos. And the answer for that one is going to be two days. Two days for Dia de los muertos. Okay, good stuff. I hope my Mexican friends will, uh, will agree with me on that one. The Lively Sphinx has climbed up 77 places that time. Tremendous. Let's keep going. From the end of September to mid-October, Buddhist families gather to celebrate this, a religious holiday to celebrate the dead. Which one is that? Buddhist families celebrate to, gather to celebrate this. I'm not gonna try to pronounce these, but the answer I know is Kuchumben, Kuchumben. Okay, that's the answer for that particular question. All right, so we're doing a real global competition here today, aren't we? That was a combo breaker. 10 players just dropped their streak of four in a row. And now we have a new leaderboard. Let's see if we can keep going. Okay, souvent c'est un jour quand on est superstitieux. C'est mm, le 13. I'm looking for the day of the week in French to complete that sentence. And I can tell you that in English, it's Friday. In Spanish, it's viernes. But in French, it's a seven letter word, sorry, eight letter word. The typing tool in full action here. The answer we're looking for was Vendredi, and 65 people got that right. Vendredi, Friday the 13th. Vendredi le 13. Tough round, as we can see. And the Eager Beager is in first place. All yeah, right, let's double up. Add, oh, I was just gonna add on to the um, type answer option. If you're like me and spelling sometimes gives you hesitation, especially in new languages, you can also add multiple correct answers in the type answer, which is great if you have new learners, learners that are experiencing new alphabets, or you're just accepting different versions and abbreviations of the same word. Point. Excellent point, Hannah. Thank you very much for sharing that. Good stuff. And most of you got La Maison Hantée, the haunted house. And the lovely possum is coming up with three in a row. Eager bear still in first. We're on number 19. The puzzle. Let's rearrange the sentence parts in the correct order. Here we go. Now, nearly 4,000 costume Halloween enthusiasts. From all around the world gathered just outside of Tokyo at the end of every October for the past 21 years and for the Kawasaki Halloween Parade. So let's see if we can put that in the correct order. All right, and again, I would point out that we have the exclamation point at the end and look where our capital letter is. So there we go, we can move that one over there, leave that one there, 10 seconds to go. All right. All right, 78% of you got that right, exactly. Okay, so that happens in Tokyo, just outside of Tokyo um, for the Halloween parade. All right, the noble Lyric has climbed up 19 places. The eager bear is still in first. The tropical cat and the epic urchin climbing up as well. Now, let's type in the answer again. We're going to double our points. L'Halloween est toujours le 31 octobre. C'est dans quelle saison? Okay, we're looking for the French. French word for autumn. That's a big hint. The French word for autumn is la saison that we're talking about. And as Hannah pointed out, you can have several spellings if you wish. I think it's up to four 
different spellings for the question, for the answer to that question. Um, and also, if you ask for a number, you can either type in the number or you can spell that number out as well. All right, so we're down to 10 seconds. Just under 300 answers. Let's see how many people could get Otan. Otan is the one we're looking for. There it is right there. 93 people got that correct. Bravo, mes amis. Well done, 93. Great stuff. So three players are on fire and have reached 13 in a row. And the leaderboard has changed again as we near the end of our Halloween cahoots. Okay, so come on, dit-on, une araignée, une araignée en anglais. Of course, the image is going to help you out big time there. All right, and there we were looking for the spider. Yes, the speeder, spider, that's it. All right, the witty eagle now has 14 in a row. We're getting close to the end, guys. I'm, I'm thinking there's only a couple questions left. Let's double our points, see if we can climb up. Set personnes sous de guise come. This person is dressed up as what? Un vampire, un loup-garou, un fantôme ou une sorcière? Five seconds. And un fantôme, exactement. Yeah, that's the ghost. Okay, the happy Echinda is back in the game. Giving ants has taken over the lead, followed by the fearless seal. The melodic chicken is still on the game. Excited gator and the mystery dragon. And here we go with a puzzle. What do you see in this image? We have to put the pieces in the correct order. Remember, if you're on a phone, you're going to slide it up and down. On a device, you're going to go left to right. Click and kind of drag. Okay, still got some time to go there. People are figuring it out, putting it together. And forgot to mention, guys, that the, there's a timer feature with any Kahoot question, which can be as low as 10 seconds or as long as four minutes long. So that's entirely up to you as to how you want to set that up. I find with the puzzle questions, I like to give them at least 30 seconds, usually a minute put things in the correct order. Good job, folks. Le fantôme monte l'escalier. The ghost is going up the stairs. Good stuff. All right, the nimble bee has climbed a lot then. Let's see, we have the type the answer with a video question. Now, this is the year we're looking for. All right, so that puts everyone in the mood for Halloween. We're looking for the year that Michael Jackson's hit song, Thriller, was released. What year was that released? And perhaps there's some Google searching going on as we speak to make sure you've got the correct answer. So if you wanted to take away from that, you would obviously have a shorter amount of time for students to answer the question, right? And also on this video, rather than playing the entire 11 minute video, I decided to take 30 seconds of it, play it in the question prompt, and then the answer comes after that.
All right. So there we are. How many people? 1982. 1982. I also accepted 82. I didn't know if some people would say that or not. But yes, it was 1982 and 85 people got that right. Hannah, are we ready for the podium? Are we ready to see? I am the big excited one? to see with so many players. I'm eager to see how our points lined up. Absolutely. Right. Excellent. Well, let's go. And here we have the podium coming up, folks. In third place, the Giving Ant. The decisive Egret was second, and our champion today, the Melodic Chicken, came back in the end. Hats off to Fearless and Fabulous. We're not sure what they are. Oh, isn't that a wonderful Bitmoji of me to finish things off there today? All right. So, and in addition to this, <laughs> I, do we want to show a little bit about the, well, certainly what I encourage my students to do is to give me feedback on the game. And I can either opt to look at that privately or I can show it to everyone, the entire class. So that's an option that you have uh, to do there. All right, and overall, it looks like the game was fairly well received, which is great to know. And also the reporting feature is absolutely phenomenal because I won't get into it now, but if I look at the report, I can see how each and every one of you scored on each and every question, which is ideal. If I need to go back and reteach a particular concept or idea, I know, you know, what areas need improvement and what areas students are doing really well at. All right, so I won't show that now. That's simply the, the report. You simply click on that and I could open that up uh, for uh, to have a look at. All right, so before I clue up there, 4.5, that's a pretty good rating. I'm happy with that. I can live with that. Uh, I just want to finish up by saying, before I hand it back to Hannah, is that don't take my word for it. My students, and you're the same way, you're going to be seeing what your students think of these games, okay? And when I polled my students at the end of June last year, by far 94% of my students preferred Kahoot as the uh, learning app of preference over some other very notable ones as well. All right, so that's great, 94.6, we need to look at that. So coming from the East Coast of Canada, in the spring of every year, we always get icebergs. And you guys know the expression, the tip of the iceberg. Well, that's kind of what we looked at today, all right? Your challenge is to dive in and explore all the different options that are available in the Kahoot suite of questions. And for any more information on how to avail and get access to those, uh, Hannah and Aaron are certainly there to answer any questions you might have. So we just hit the tip of the iceberg today, folks. Now it's up to you to jump in and explore. Hannah, you can take it over here if you would like. Fantastic. Yeah. Thanks so much for sharing all of the amazing features, Glenn. And we hope you got a great taste of how to implement these tools in your classroom with learners of all ages, all backgrounds, and all language skills as well. Um, we appreciate you taking the time to join us, and we hope that your hard work um, does not go unnoticed. So please stay tuned for a downloadable and printable certificate to add to your teaching credential portfolio or even um, on a bulletin board to brag about your hard work. That will be coming in a follow-up email that you will get um, within the next few days or through the end of this week, as well as an opportunity to share feedback about our presentation. If you don't mind going to the next slide, Glenn. Thank you. Um, also in this follow-up email will be an opportunity to share your feedback about what was most valuable in this presentation or different ideas and focus topics you would like us to build a webinar for next. We are always open to suggestions, whether it is in community education like this or suggestions about how we can really develop our Kahoot platform and make it even more engaging and more powerful for your classroom instruction. So thank you so much for joining us and hearing about all things Kahoot. 
Kahoot with our new audio features. If you still have questions in the Q&A and would like to stick around for another few minutes while Aaron and I um, type and answer them as fast as we can, no problem there. Um, but thank you so much. And it was great to have so many participants from far and wide join us on this afternoon for me or